Time now for news from the left. Joe Biden, the president, woke up from his nap today for the 4th of July, was trotted out to speak about education, indoctrination. It went just about as good as you would expect. Take a look. I'm Joe Biden. I am Joe Biden's husband. Children are the kite strings. They're not somebody else's. They're all our children. We're going to be talking about the pandemic, our, 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 those who succeed us, for a long time. A kid going from a broken home in a tough circumstance is going to hear a million fewer words spoken by the time they get to first grade. The program is still there. Go to, anyway, you ought to contact us. Go to, uh, I have no idea where you need to go. <laughs> I'm just going to keep pushing my agenda. And he always starts off with, I'm, I'm Jill Biden's husband, because all the people that sit there and tell them how to win elections are like, well, you need to get the women vote. So you need to make it sound like, you know, you know, it's, it's all just a game. It's all a manipulation. It's all nonsense. He's playing a part. It's very easy to see. Up next for this uh, July 4th, political cartoonist of Washington Post, Michael Ramirez, put out a very interesting cartoon, created a, a mock movie poster, the classic film Independence Day, with Bidenomics written on the alien ship that's ready to destroy the White House, writing coming November 2024. Now, it's pretty shocking to see that from the Washington Post. I mean, look at that. Seems like something you'd see in the New York Post. And it's loyal leftist readers at WAPO very upset that their safe space has published an obvious reality that they don't like. And in truth, Bidenomics is going to be a disaster in 2024. Right now, the economy is showing serious signs of recession coming. I know we've been talking about this for a long time as this thing continues to backbuild, but the economy's move slow. What's called an inverted bond yield is happening right now. The rate of return on a two-year Treasury bond is currently higher than on a 10-year. So your money's only locked up for two and you're getting more back than if it's locked up for 10. Does that make any sense? It's usually a clear sign of a recession. And right now we're seeing the deepest inversion point we've seen since 1981 in this inverted bond, year, bond yield. And that, uh, as you can remember, the early 80s, that was a very, very, very tough time. And interest rates had to go very, very high to pull us out of that one when Reagan came into the White House right after Carter, the disaster that was Jimmy Carter. Uh, this, of course, been back building for some time. We'll see how it, uh, it goes. But that inversion is scary stuff in the economy. Up next, member of San Francisco Slavery Reparations Committee, Nicole Cunningham, recently interviewed by The Telegraph and blasting straight white men as the danger to society that we all know that we are, telling the Telegraph, straight white men are abusive. Straight white men are serial killers. Hey, lady, I've only killed like nine people. She went on to say, you got to remember their ancestors are the ones who were standing out here in their Sunday best watching black people hang and burn. White supremacy is ingrained in the DNA of this country. Nice to see such well-adjusted people are in charge of determining the recommendation for how many billions of dollars California is going to give away a state that never had slavery at all. And these are the people that are going to be making the recommendation. I wonder what they're going to decide. And finally, MSNBC's Joy Reid says LGBTQ people are not safe in America and ground zero for all of this hatred is the state of Florida. Take a listen. Over the course of the past year, the United States of America has become an increasingly less safe place for the LGBTQ community. And ground zero for this anti-LGBTQ movement is Florida, led by its governor, Ron DeSantis, who's been seemingly, who seemingly made it his entire goal to ban everything from drag shows to even just talking about sexuality in schools. This is all Joy Reid does, by the way. The desperation has become so boring at this point with this just it's constant victim noise from this woman. I mean, she just never shuts up about it. The manipulation is also so clear. I mean, you're, you're seeing how they've created this. They have to be victims, so they have to create the environment so that they can be victimized. Right. So now it's like, oh, you, you, we can't dance naked in front of little kids. We can't be giving seven year olds that are just confused for 10 minutes a hysterectomy. Well, you guys are all bigot transphobes, and this is not how what America was supposed to be, and this is a terrible assault, and you're all Nazis. We're victims. And the moment that society then moves even further toward insanity and appeases these perversions, because of course it will, it already has, right? They'll just push a little bit further until society says no again, and then they get to cry victim again.
because that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. That's what fuels these people. Without victimhood, they have nothing else. So no matter how much they're coddled in a society like this, no matter how ridiculous we become to capitulate to them, they'll never be satisfied because they can't just function in a normal society. Then they don't have anything to complain about. What are they going to do? Then they're really in trouble.